everyone and welcome to this next episode of computers python and data science this is going to be an especially awesome episode just because it's my birthday today so let's get it uh, i think this uh is going to be over lists if i remember what they said last time correctly and it looks like uh the theme is going to be emojis so uh let's get started hit next more emoji stuff I guess okay here we go strings let's see where's the description make this a little bit bigger here you guys recognize these emojis these ones at the bottom I don't know I've never used those before okay but it looks like fractional numbers are classified as float data we learned that last time however text and symbols in Python are classified as the str or string data type which stands for string We've already dealt with strings before, but did not yet explain that they have a different data type. So basically anything you put in quotes, like they have here, tears of joy, that's going to be a string data type. Okay, and uh, then they just have a comment. Uh, I guess they explain the type. In Python, a string is a sequence of any symbols in either double or single quotation marks. Single quotation marks can be utilized when you have to place quotation marks within strings. The heart emoji is one of the most popular. So you see they interlay, they on the outside they have single quotes and on the inside they can use double quotes because um, they, they don't match up together and if you're already in a string you can't make another string. So let's create a string with the following text. Let's see where did that go. We're studying the statistics of various emojis. All right, so they have the intro text here. I don't like that they write these comments in for us, but that's okay. We're studying. Oh, looks like we should probably use uh, double quotes because uh, we're going to have to use a apostrophe in here. We're studying the statistics of various emojis also have to have a period there and it's ended with a double quote all right so let's check I actually didn't even run it there's nothing printed so you seem to have made an error make sure your output meets the required conditions then stored in the variable intro text and printed on the screen using print. So we didn't print it, that's why. So then we'll do print intro underscore text. It helps to read all the instructions. <laughs> okay, that looks right, right? So we'll check it. Correct, awesome, let's do task number two. Strings can sometimes consist of more than just letters. They may include symbols. Try to print out strings with the symbolic alternative of several emojis. You can see them depicted in the table below. So it wants us to do smiley face and uh, laughing and kiss, I guess. So does it want us to print all three? Let's see. Okay, so what if I do a colon and then, okay, there's one, and we'll print that, and then we'll copy paste this a couple times, I guess. It's kind of weird, they don't exactly tell you what they want here. Or maybe I'm missing something. So then we do D and dash who actually puts the dash in their emojis for the nose I've never done that I always just have the face in the so I guess I was oh you had to hit next and now now it's actually showing okay so smile we're gonna put here is uh, now it makes more sense Okay, and then laughing is equal to 
that, right? And then uh, kiss here. It's colon dash star. Okay, let's see if that prints. Seems about right. Let's check it. Correct. Awesome. So let's see what the next one is. Emojis can also be written into strings, however, they may might not be displayed correctly in specific browsers and operating systems. For that reason, we won't use them in our code, but in this task, you can try and see if they work for you. The check button in this task does not actually check anything. Click it in order to advance to the next task. All right, so let's just see if it works. Works in our browser. How silly. All right, here we go. Now we're starting with lists. This is what I thought we were going to get into. Create a list name Instagram containing the first five elements of the column Instagram, comma, mill. The elements must be a float type. I guess we skipped the introduction of this. Okay, now that we know how to store single elements of tables, values of float and string data types, let's learn how to turn strings and columns into tables. In order to do that, we need a new data type list. It's a sequence of values similar to an array used in other programming languages. The list is the first data structure you will learn. Data structures organize given elements and are configured according to specific rules like, for example, sequential storing in a list. In order to create a new list in Python, you must first list all the elements separated by commas within square brackets. For example, here's a list with the first five values of emoji express mill column. The list is stored in the variable emoji express and can be printed on the screen using print. We can imagine that the variables are boxes that store values and that the list is a shelf that the boxes are sitting on. The shelf has a name, seeing as the list itself will be stored in the variable, and each box on the shelf has its own number. These numbers are called indices. Please take note that the first element in a list is assigned to the index O. Oh, zero, sorry. In order to obtain an element from the list and, and do what you want with it, you will have to indicate its index within a pair of square brackets. All right, so that's a whole lot of information. I think it's going to be easier just to do it to help understand. So um, they want us to do the first five elements of the column um, Instagram comma mill, which is here. So we'll do write the code here. So remember they said list starts with a bracket, a square bracket, and then inside the bracket we're going to do the values. Uh, the first one is 0 0.774, then you put a comma, and then you put the next one, 7.31, then you put a comma, then we scroll down, 2.36, then we put a comma, then 4.26, now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, so we need one more, 11.2. Uh, Alright, so let's run that and see if that's what they're looking for. And check it. Incorrect value for variable Instagram. First five elements of the column Instagram mill. Oh, I skipped a few. Sorry, I wasn't scrolling up to the top, I guess. 1.02 comma 1.69 comma 0.774. Okay, and then we, so we take off these last two now. And make sure that you don't have that last comma if you don't have an element there. Okay, so we hit play. 1.02, 1 1.69. Okay, let's check that. Correct. Awesome. So we go to the next one. You don't have to maintain the same value types within lists. For example, we can keep both strings and numbers in the same list. Create a list of elements in the table's first row and then print it out to the screen. Skip the symbol column. It will not be required this time around. So the first row is grinning. And they said to put the first... Let's get rid of this comment. I hate these. I wish they just didn't put those in. 
Okay, um, 2.26 comma 1.02 comma 87.3 comma and there's nothing in property. So do they want us to put a blank string? Is that what they're looking for? I guess we should probably put grinning in here as well, huh? So that's first. We do grinning. Does that look right to you guys? Let's see. Awesome, we did it. Next. Okay, task three. Now let's calculate the proportion of the selected emojis. First, figure out the sum of the first five elements we've prepared within the emoji express list. However, don't add the numbers themselves. Add the elements obtained by indexing instead. Then print the result on the screen. The format for the output has already been provided for you in the pre-code. Okay, so the total is going to be emoji express and they said remember to access an element you put a bracket and then the index of it which is going to be zero and then we want to add emoji express one we'll copy paste to make it a little bit easier okay so we have zero plus one plus two plus three how many do they want they want five yeah first five elements so we have zero one two three and we need one more four all right so let's see if that works and we'll check it awesome we did it next automation of lists our previous example has demonstrated that we'll need a better tool for sorting through lists. In the loops lesson, you'll learn how to repeat the same actions for every element in the list. In the addition assignment lesson, you'll learn how to add value of one to another. And in the summation of loops, you'll combine the tasks. Okay, so inside the Twitter variable is a list of values from, oh, I guess we should read loops first, shouldn't we? Okay, a loop is a structure for repeating functions within code. Let's begin with an easy exercise. Print out the first 10 elements of the table. Uh, emoji Express, and they do four element in Emoji Express. So here's the loop portion that you shouldn't have seen before. Uh, four element in Emoji Express. So it's like they're doing, they're going through this, this, uh, this list, which is called Emoji Express, right? And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten elements in it right and so it's going to do for uh, for each element in of the 10 elements uh, so what student is accessing say the first time it goes through the loop element is going to be equal to 2.26 the next time it goes through the loop it's going to be 19.1 the next time it goes it's going to be 25.6 and so on let's see if they explain that better here this loop orders for every element of the list emoji express do this and then calls the print function for each element. A loop structure or syntax looks similar to this. And they give you a uh, image of what we already saw. Loops are declared by using the keywords for and in, hence they are referred to as a for loop. While loops mar uh, while using loops, margins in Python will highlight the code applied to each designated element loop body. Although margins are nothing more than a bunch of spaces, they're vital in order to help Python differentiate the loop body from the rest of the code. Let's look at an example. So you can see they're just showing you um, here, look how there's an indentation, right? So the print is on the same indentation as the for loop start, but then everything that's inside the loop is in the next indentation. So this is indented, this is indented, this is indented, and, and so on. Okay, in order to insert four spaces, you can hit the tab button once. The interactive platform will then automatically convert the tab 
tabulation symbol into spaces. Python does not comprehend code that uses both tabulation and spaces, which is another flaw of Python, but it's okay. Okay, so inside the Twitter variable is a list of values from the column Twitter mill for the top 10 emojis. Print a column with these values in the following format. Twitter mill, they do a dash, and then they want us to write a for loop that iterates through the Twitter. So we do for um, element in Twitter, colon, we press enter and it auto tabbed for me, that's nice. And then it wants us to print the uh, element, right? All right, so I think that should be all we need. Yep, so you can see 86, 7.3 and so on. All right, so let's check that. Correct, we complete the task, okay, cool. All right, so task number two. The total number of emojis sent with the Emoji Express keyboard is 1.72 billion or 1720 million. For each of the top 10 emojis, calculate their proportion of the total amount, then present that share as a percentage precise to the first decimal place in the following format. Okay, so this is kind of combining what we did uh, in the last lesson with uh, the for loop here. So let's see. So they give us the total, and then we do emoji share colon, and then print the um, shares. So they want to use a loop here. So we do um, for element in what is it? Emoji express. Emoji express colon. Divide the quantity of the specific emoji by the total. Okay, so we do element divided by divided by um, emoji express total. And yeah, I should keep with the consistent spacing, right? They said you should have spaces between your things. Oh. So this is going to be part. OK, and then these should each be on their own uh, indentation level, right? OK, so that's going to print um, the emoji share, the emoji share, the emoji share, and then the total emoji. So I think I think that's correct, right? Let's run it. Okay, so if we scroll up, emoji share 0.1%, 1.1%. All right, that, that's correct, right? So we'll check it. All right, cool. We completed the task. It's next. The addition assignment. All right, let's scroll down a little bit. The next step is to summing up whole list. Oh, the next step to summing up whole list is learning how to add individual values and storing them as variables. Please keep in mind when calculating the value of one variable, you can use other variables as well. Okay, so they have grinning, beaming, and lawful. And then they print total. Okay. Later on, the value of this variable can be changed. So then they do total equals total plus beaming, total plus raffle, okay? Do you recall that an equal sign is the assignment operator first? The value to the right of it will be calculated and the result is stored in the variable to the left. Okay, oftentimes you will need to add a value to a variable and at the same time store the sum within it. In order to do that, there is a special addition assignment operator which is plus equals. With it, the code total equals total plus beaming can be written as total plus equals beaming. Similar abbreviations also exist for other arithmetic operations. So you have A equals A plus B, it's A plus equals B, A minus equals B, A times equals B, and A divided equals B. Okay, so now we calculate the total number of hands featured in these particular emojis. Um, All right, so we need to do total um, 
Let's see, so total hands, originally zero. And they want us to add kiss, which is, um, it's weird that they, they have kissing and they also have kiss mark. They don't just have single kiss, right? So that, that could be an issue, you know? Uh, All right, we'll just do the kiss for now, which is 21.7. It's also confusing because this, this comment is, uh, do we put it after or before? I guess here we can do 21.7. Thumbs up is, um, Twenty-three point one. Raffle is twenty-five point six. Dang, they want us to do a bunch. Total hands plus equals winking is 15.2 thinking thinking is 6.81 I'm also confused because Kiss doesn't have a thumb in it, or it doesn't have a hand in it, does it? Yeah, I really don't get the whole, what they're doing with the emojis here. Uh, we'll see though, we'll see. So Shrugging has 1.74, right? Total hands plus equals 1.74. Oh, they give you which one we're supposed to use, though, right here. So let's see. It's supposed to be this one, 87.5. And maybe it has a hand on a different uh, browser or something. Total hands is... Uh, 87.5, right? Okay, let's run that, see what we get. 159, let's see. Incorrect, let's check again. Okay, so we have the kissing one, right? And we, what do we say that was? 87.5. Yep, that looks right. Then they have the thumbs up picture down here, which is, where'd it go? There it is, 23.1. Okay, and we have Raffle, which is 25.6. Okay, that's right. Winking is 15.2. Thinking is 6.81, right? Let's see, yep, thinking is 6.81. Shrugging is 1.74. So what are we missing, guys? Calculate the total number of hands featured in these particular emojis. Well, so maybe it's like I said before, the kiss doesn't actually have a hand in it. So if we put zero here, the thumbs up does. Oh, okay, wait a minute. I think I was, I was putting the number here and I think it really just wants the number of hands. I, I feel it's kind of silly now. Okay, so the total number of hands in the thumbs up 
is one. The total number of hands in the laughing is zero. In the winking is uh, zero. In the thinking there's one, right? And in the shrugging there's two. All right, let's see if that's right. All right, let's check. Yay, we did it. Okay, next. Okay, task number two. Calculate the sum of the first five emojis by using the addition assignment operator. In order to do that, store the transitional values and the final result in total. Finally, print the result rounded to two decimal places. It's already been completed for you in the pre-code. Okay, so equate the total to zero. So total equals zero. Add the value with index zero. Total plus equals emoji express at index zero. Okay, add the value with the index one. Total plus equals emoji express one. Okay, add the value with index two. So you have total plus equals emoji express two. Okay, and then we do total plus equals emoji express. Dang, up here I misspelled it. That's you, you gotta watch for that too, I guess, because uh, there's three and then index four. Total plus oh plus equals emoji express four. And then it prints it for us. So let's see. Two ninety-five point one six. is correct. So next, summation with loops. Let's calculate, let's see if we, there's a description for this one. Before we start automating the list summation, there's one more step that has to be taken, combining the use of addition, assignment, and loops. In the previous lesson, we calculated the sum of the first few elements of the column emoji express as so. You can also add additional values by using a loop rather than doing it manually. For each uh, count in express count, I uh, take the total and plus equals count. I don't know what this colon's doing here. Oh, I think this is actually supposed to be up here, right? After our for loop, you're supposed to have a colon here. For some reason, it's on the next line. Using loops is convenient because now we can sum up lists of any given length. So, yep. So let's calculate the oh, the proportion of the chosen emojis within the Emoji Express. The total quantity of messages sent with the Emoji Express keyboard is 1.72 million billion or one or 1720 million emojis. Sum up the quantity of every emoji in the table and then divide by the sum. Then present that share as the percentage accurate to the first decimal place, just like in the pre-code. Okay, so. Selected total plus equals count. The shares, let's see. Is this just supposed to be the selected total? Selected total divided by the emoji total. Emoji express total. Underscore total. All right, is that what they're looking for?
40.4%. Hey, all right, let's go next. Task two, calculate the proportion of our chosen emojis on Twitter. In total, 24.5 billion or 24,500 million emojis have been registered there. Name the variable used for saving sum selected total. All right, so the selected total is originally equal to zero, and then we need to iterate through the loop like they did in the last example for um, elements in Twitter. Selected total plus equals element. And then we get that share just like we did last time by doing, um, it's the selected total divided by the Twitter total. Okay, and so that we get a float originally, I'm gonna put as, I don't think that matters, but I put that point zero. 39%. Nice, we did it. And that's the end of this module, guys. So uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope to catch you next time.